Let's see, I think everybody's here, all eight of us, all members are, are present. We have uh, one guest, uh, Chuck Wheeler, and uh, the regular <coughs> staff, uh, Ronnie Meanings, and Young Cop. Um, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Can make a motion we approve it? All right, a motion, and a motion to approve it and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. The approval of the previous month's minutes. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? I got a couple. Uh, correct me if you don't remember the way, the way I remember it, but in the uh, under paragraph five, old business, mm -hmm. the third line down, uh, L, the, uh, the uh, Long, Longmont Senior Center Advisory Board, I would add is at the policy level it needs to be, so add the word level, it needs to be advisory in uh, character. Anybody have any problem with that? Mm -hmm. And then at the top of the next page, uh, needed to accept money from state or federal grants. And it would also include uh, organizations such as Friends. Well, so is Friends is part of the intergovernmental? Yeah. No. It is? No. Yeah, uh, it is, but then you could add comma and organizations such as Friends. No. Council approval. Is it is it needed to accept money from friends or other organizations? Because that's it says city council approval is needed to accept money from state or federal grants. But is it also needed to accept money from friends and other organizations? Yes. The way city I council approval. Correct me if I'm wrong. Any any organization that wants to contribute money to the senior center has to go through city council for approval and it's allocated through your uh, treasurer's or your assessor's office. Yes. You say that hesitatingly. Yeah. yeah. Just thinking of the process uh, for friends because um, I'm trying to think of the last year. Uh, but but it, any, any donation, whether donation. it's from friends or any other group would have to be approved by city council. Yes. So every time Friends wants to give money to here, it has to be approved first by City Council before well, they can I do it? That's what I understood. And I wish Christina was here for that one specifically, but um, I think it's over a certain dollar amount um, for, for our Friends specifically. Um, but I will have to get back to the board on that. I'll tell you what, then. let's just leave it as it is, and I'll check into it. And, and next meeting, if that, because I, I need to know, or I'd like to know just exactly what that is. I was led to believe that anything that any contribution get had to be approved as a council. That includes goods and services as well as money, correct? Cash, money. Not goods or services. I don't know about goods and services, okay. but that's okay. a good question too. Yeah, I think we need, okay. So, because that's uh, that's what I, that's the assumption I've been operating under for God, a couple of years. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. But. Well. But we'll check it out. Okay. Check that out. Anyway, just leave the minutes as they are for the time being. Then. Except for the policy level? Level. Yeah, policy level. You can leave that as it is. And then on the next page, under item 8, uh, item 8, item D, friends. Now, I think that's going a little further. I probably presented that as being a little further along than it is. So I would say a five-year strategic plan of the Friends, LCS staff, and LCAB for activities, programs, and services, and priorities is being discussed, period. That 150 a year, that was, that was just an example. And then the, recommend, the rest of it can be this, okay. Then sustainability should be E, <coughs> right? Uh, yeah, sustainability should be E. I didn't notice that. And under the, the following, uh, the last page, um, 
seat. The second line, let's see, how, how can you do that? Just say, I just suggested a meeting with Brandy Supporter Staff and uh, resource, resource Specialist uh, And that's it. Anybody have any other, anybody have any comments, additions, corrections? And we'll follow up on that other item. Okay, uh, someone make a motion for approval. Lonnie? Make a motion. John, second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, motion carries. All right. Old business. Uh, and uh, let's see, Cami okay. is going to be here. When is she going to be here? Do we know? So I reached out. She said that she'd been in discussion with other board members about attending today's meeting. Um, they just, in email, communicated the date and time. And that's the last I heard. So okay. let her know it's starting at 10 a.m. So we can start with her. Before. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll just go ahead then. Uh, transportation. Any updates on transportation? Um, I know that I sent the in information if there were any questions on that. I do have a concern, and <clears throat> I also would like this brought up under future agenda items. I would, I've been getting a lot of complaints regarding via transportation for the seniors, and that's really what they are, is their transportation for seniors. And it has to do with people not being able to get rides, uh, people being left at facilities for an inordinate num you know, amount of time. Um, and so I just am wondering if we should have if we could maybe invite them to come over and talk to us about what it is that they do. That was it. All right. I think that's a good idea. I think it's yeah. a very good idea. I hear it a lot at Village Place. I have too. Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 there's so a lot of appointments. I've been on like somebody's list as a second backup. If they get close to the appointment and B is not there, they'll call me and I'll give them a ride. But most importantly, getting to a place and then being left there. Left there. Yeah. That's yeah. the big thing. No There's care. no guarantee once you get a ride there that you're going to get a ride back. Right. Um, and they're left so there. People have been left there for a really long amount well, of time. Yeah. And, and they've had to close. seek transportation elsewhere to get home. Right. right. That's fine. So, yeah. yeah. So I think that it would be nice if they came and talked to us and we could kind of share with them some of our concerns that we're hearing. I think I think everybody around the table had some sort of feedback, negative feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, well, isn't it true that once you get there, you can't make, you can make a reservation to go. Yes. But you can't make a reservation to come back. Is that, is you that how it works? You should be able to do both of them, but it depends on, the way I understand it is, you're not always going to have them come back when you actually need them. Now I'm going to give you a uh, I went to Boulder a couple of weeks ago on VIA, okay? And it was fine because all of us in the bus got there uh, in time for the meeting. However, when it was time to come back, we waited over there for at least an hour before somebody came from Longmont in a, in a VIA van to pick us up. And you know they went to Boulder? VIA does. VIA. VIA. I didn't know that. Yeah. And just to clarify this for everybody, it was for the AAC meeting, yes, it was. This was for the, the group that all the, um, like myself, the reps mm -hmm. from all the different areas, some can get picked up if you don't want to drive into Boulder, especially Boulder because parking's bad. Yep. They encourage us to group together and get picked up and, and get driven into the meeting. So these guys, I did it on Zoom, but these guys went mm -hmm. and they didn't necessarily have a ride back. And the woman who's on our, our co-chair with Arlene works for VIA. Yeah, and she usually was there drives. calling and calling and calling them to find out where they were at, and finally they came. But we were over there, mm -hmm. stuck over there. Wow. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing, to me, it was it was okay. One of the people with us though, was, was in a wheelchair, okay? So that's not real convenient for them. Um, so it was like, okay, what are you doing about these people that are getting left for two or three hours? At a doctor's appointment or something yeah. and yeah so i think we need to it would be nice if they could tell us what they have to do yeah sounds like a, and yeah. that's a good idea 
And I don't want to say that the people who are going to this meeting are any more important than anybody who's going no, to a doctor's no. appointment or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't want to give that indication at all. Um, but obviously, throughout a cross-section of people who are using VIA, they're not finding it to be satisfactory. So. Hmm. I should know this, but I, I don't for, for, refresh my memory. Is that a contracted service with the city? Mm -hmm. how, how does that work? Mm -hmm. It is? Well, and they provide, okay, pardon. And this is what we kind of need to understand from VIA is that they're, um, the reason, their reason for being is to provide transportation in Boulder County for seniors, mm -hmm. okay? So we're part of Boulder County, and yes, the city does pay through a, a contract for them to deliver people to and from uh, medical appointments and things like that. So, yeah, but that is, they're, they're supposed to be delivering, you know, responsible for people in Boulder County. Okay. So it would be kind of interesting to know what exactly the concern is. Yeah, yeah, yes. And here's the thing too, how long ago did we have our meeting at VIA and here heard the executive director speak? Uh, probably was about that? seven, eight months ago. Yeah. yeah, and he was all up about how it keeps him up at night to know that yeah. he can't provide the service that people are used to from VIA, mm -hmm. like they can't go to church, he can't bring seniors to the beauty parlor, all that really keeps him up at night, but they've made this improvement of hiring more um, drivers, mm -hmm. and that they were giving me indication six or, you know, nine, eight or nine months ago that things were going to change. Mm -hmm. And they obviously have it. Mm -hmm. So oh. yeah. I think it would be very important to ask him to come and speak to us. Well, and somebody else along with him because he's pretty positive. Some of the, you know, I think that they are they don't have enough drivers, and that's part of the problem. And you end up with vehicles that don't have air conditioning at 100 degrees. I mean, some of the stuff is something's going on that doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to me. So yeah. I don't know. Well, they're not living up to their contract. Well, sounds like sounds like something's not right. Yeah, How would I, How would I think I? they'd be able to get what they need. I'm sorry, I'm going on and on. That's all right. Oh, uh, how would I get a hold of the contract? Who handles <coughs> the contract? Your purchasing office? I think we just call me. And then we just call me directly. Yeah. Yeah. Via directly. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be good to take a look at their contract and see what they're supposed to be doing. You know. I don't have a copy of that. I'm sorry? I actually have a copy of that. Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our of course you would. <laughs> uh, okay. Anything for, okay, so we will remember to put that on our next agenda. Right. Via. So you want me to pull me to, I, I can reach out to try to make that contact. Do you want me to um, see if we can get them in as early as November? No, yeah, is that okay? Is that all right with everybody? Probably sure. the sooner the better. If there's Old weather coming sure. up. I think. Okay, go ahead and do it. Whatever. Okay. All right, anything else, Arlene? <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. That was my five minutes. <laughs> well, that's all right. Okay, I think we got a little extra time today. Uh, okay, housing. Housing. I didn't have a big report, but I did want to bring up one thing. Um, <clears throat> I did explain what the um, agreement is in Longmont with people who are, uh, with developers who are buying, excuse me, who are building new um, developments and the agreement on how much has to be affordable and things like that, that's in there. And then um, our renovation is finishing up, which is really nice. Construction at- Wait, Where is that res uh, renovation? Right. Village on Main, yeah, or the Village Main. Place Apartments. It's yep. diagonally across from the Motor Vehicle Hub. Okay, Sixth and the Main. Boulder County. Yeah. Okay. Sixth and Main. Sixth and Main is the okay. back of the building. Sixth and Kaufman is the front of the building. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, the Hilltop Apartments in Boulder. The construction has been delayed. Um, and I told you about the launch housing <coughs> group that did a. A presentation between last meeting and this one on attainable housing. So people who are interested in learning more about attainable housing, they're a group that you might want to contact and keep in touch with. Um, the City of Longmont offers a housing rehabilitation program that provides income qualified assistance for mobile and site-built homes. 
Uh, they offer a variety of housing resources, including ADA modifications, affordable rentals, energy efficient support, and more. And the city also offers a range of human services, including home, homeless prevention, mental health support, and food assistance, which are basically right here at the same site. So. And that's pretty much it. Do the, do the resource specialists make use of the AD, uh, refer people, you know, for ADA modifications, you know, for the mobile homes and that sort of thing, renovation of mobile homes? And then say that, I'm sorry, the question uh, again? Do the resource specialists take advantage of that? Do they refer people to, what did you call it? The ADA modifications. ADA modifications. ADA modifications, do they take advantage? Do they, do they refer people to take advantage? It's part of the housing rehabilitation program. Right, yeah. if, if there's a need there, I mean, again, they yeah. assess whatever. Um, um, in their in their client meetings, they're able to assess what needs they are, and then they come usually for something specifically in the scope, and they, they, they provide those recommendations or uh, direct for, for those services outside of the senior center. Yeah, and Cultivate also does that. I'm sorry? Cultivate. 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 If they came and they put bars in my bathroom. Oh. But they'll do, they'll do ribs too. Oh. They'll do, really? they do almost anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? They're amazing. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Huh. All these resources are available. There oh. are a lot. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, got, I've got one question. And I won't mean to put you in the spot. Uh, Lonnie, I, re I really don't. But I, I have a question about, and maybe it's obvious to everybody else, but I, I can't quite figure it out. Yeah. I read your reports very closely. You know, every month I read your reports. And I guess, I guess my question is, who's in charge uh, of, of housing in the community? It, it looks like I don't know, you, you went through a half a dozen, 10 sources here, mm -hmm. and they all, seem like they're, they all seem like they're silos, you know? Mm -hmm. They're all by their lonesome. They, I don't know to what extent they coordinate. I don't know if there's anybody in charge, local housing authority. Mm -hmm. um, who's, who's in charge? Is, uh, there, is there anybody that's trying to coordinate the overall effort of, use, of housing, and particularly housing for seniors in the community? Okay. As I understand it, the senior center would be considered the first stop, mm -hmm. correct? Where they would make an appointment with a resource specialist because they have questions about housing. When they make the appointment, they're given a packet of various places in town. There are applications for all of the Longmont Housing Authority buildings the properties. There's applications for some of the other properties. There's information on Boulder. I believe there's information on Boulder Housing Partners also, which is an independent group. When they go in and talk to somebody at the senior center, they are given information. They get to fill things out. They get to, you know, people at the, the resource specialist gets to really ask a lot of questions and narrow down exactly what their needs are. Um, they can also go to the Longmont Housing Authority. However, the way I understand it, you're better off coming here and speaking to the resource specialists because they can then funnel you out to different places and tell you that our center may be able to help with your first month's rent or your security so, deposit. Is there a, um, I don't know, I, I, I just don't know. Is there is there an office in the city yes. someplace that's responsible for housing? Yes, <clears throat> what's that? There is, there is the Longmont Housing Authority that strictly handles the housing authority facilities, okay? But in the city under the Department of Human Services, um, there is a housing, author a housing management program underneath there and what Molly O'Donnell is, is part of that as well but so they handle all of the different housing in the city so not just the housing authority but if you're looking for you know housing for affordable housing or some of the other uh, places that are available so yes there is a housing group in the city now is she Boulder County or is she Longmont he's Longmont and that's in the Human Services Department. Mm -hmm. So that's under Christina's 
Bailey would. And then the community, uh, there's a community neighborhood, community neighborhood, right. something that also does a lot with that, with that too. So if you were to go down to the offices down there on Kimbark and Third, and you walked in, and over here to the this side, where it's, yeah, right. it's it will say have community housing or something like that. But, but yes, there is a, a whole program for that. Now, do they <clears throat> do they make recommendations? Is there a connection between that group and the city council? Yes, they have to report to the city council on a regular basis, and they do. Do they make recommendations to a budget? Yes. Okay. I, I'm just wondering what I'm getting at is, is does the board want to make a recommendation as, as far as funding or organization of housing in the community? Because nobody's corrected me. I, it seems to me like you've got a bunch of separate efforts that's coordinated by people like the resource specialist. You know, is, so. I think I think the thing that would be nice would be to have somebody come from the city and explain to us what's going you know what the city is doing right now before we were to make some sort of a recommendation but one of the things that maybe is a little bit confusing is that at one time the Longmont Housing Authority was not was run as a nonprofit okay it is now folded into the city but it still is a separate entity okay. so you end up with you know hearing a couple of different things but um, that would, I don't know, that's my thinking, is that maybe it would be nice to hear what it is they have to say and what it is they're doing, and then we can kind of decide do we want to make a recommendation on something or another or whatever. It's probably been about a year since we heard from Maui. Yeah, it's been about but a year. That was the housing authority. We yeah, need that to was hear, just the housing authority. You need to hear the whole wide thing, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I'm thinking the big picture, art I guess, I can, I, can you explain that a little bit more, can we, uh, were, they're under the city, but a separate entity, mm -hmm. which means what? So at the time that they were a nonprofit organization, they ran into some problems with HUD, Human uh, Housing, uh, housing, whatever it is. Urban Development. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, and they ended up, the city ended up stepping in so that they could not lose everything, which would be they would, the HUD would come in and just take over everything. Okay, because there were a lot of problems there. So at that point, and if you guys remember back, it's probably about four years, you had your, your your manager leaving, you had your finance person leaving, all those people were leaving that nonprofit. Okay, so the city said, okay, we will have, we will come in and we will help you. We will help you with your financing, we'll help you with, you know, making sure that we can at least get beyond these problems that you guys have said, this, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. So the city came in and they did that. Well, in the process of it, they, they checked with other um, areas. Fort Collins also does the same thing. And said so they've just kind of combined them in with the city, but they still are the separate entity. They are not a city program, okay? So they're not like recreation, okay? Recreation, you know, directly reports to the city. The housing authority reports to the city council, but separate. It's kind of hard to, to you know, understand it, but it is eventually. I think what they would like to do is have them be able to get out on their own, be a nonprofit again, and be able to function on their own. That's probably going to be years down the road. So they're not city employees. They have. They brought the employees over from the housing authority mm -hmm. that were still there, and they are. They have brought them into the city, um, but they're still paid. They're paid out of the housing authority funds. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's kind of a strange, strange thing, but the city has at least got them straightened out to where they're beginning to function now to where the resources that come in, the money that comes in is paying for the operations. So if they do the remodeling, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Monty was talking about a while ago, they would go to the council and ask for money for... <coughs> or, you know, that, that they're either gonna have to have it or they can get it from the federal or the okay. state or that kind of thing. And yes, the city usually will put some money into something like that. But they've been planning ahead because in order to start a major remodel like they did, it's usually about 20 years down the road. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
So hopefully they've been saving money, you know, for 20 years. Um, I, I'm not sure that that was always done in the other uh, nonprofit. But if you guys get a chance, I'm, I'm going to continue here, okay? If you guys get a chance to go by Sixth and Main and see that, if you remember what it looked like before, it looks so much nicer now. And this morning they were cutting down tree limbs and everything, and it's like they really fits the that place up nice. But it's going to be 20 years again before they can go in and do anything down there. So, yeah. But the Housing Authority has actually nine facilities under them. The city has a whole bunch of other uh, places in town. So, and the housing, the in order to do the renovation, they had to get a lot of grants and things like that from a lot of different organizations. It wasn't just the city at all. Yeah, in fact, the city was only a city part was not being used for yeah. financing. They had to go federal. They had to go. What are some of the organizations? Federal the city. Yeah. And of course, they did. They got some funds, you know, during a COVID type thing, too, that they were able to put over there towards that. Um, and they've done and a nice job down there, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I heard so many names, well, not so many, but several names yeah. thrown around as far as the this fund and the that requirement. And when you get funded by that, those organizations, they have to come in and sign off on it. So it's a heavily, re you know, reviewed yeah, it's very and looked at program. What so would it be? To, to the board's interest to have somebody from the housing authority come in and try to explain how all that works. That's what they're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, but we don't want the housing authority. Who yeah. would you suggest? We want, we want somebody to come from the city that can say, this is what the city does overall, and this is what the housing authority does. So, because the housing authority is only nine places in the city, there are a lot of other housing facilities okay. that are available yeah. yeah so some we went on someone from the city yeah no, yeah right. and who would that be i don't know whether it would be molly or whether it would be carmen or whether it would be you know a combination of okay. who down there yeah. they well, would be able to get somebody you want to follow up on that sure on that? i'd be happy to okay it seems like it's an issue that everybody's interested in. is this something just Shake your head or raise your hand or something. Are we interested in pursuing this, finding out a little bit more about it? Yeah, yeah. So, then a couple of other things that just, so I want to just mention a couple other things today. In the newspaper, there's a really nice article in there about Zinnia. Zinnia. That's so yeah. yeah. down by the suites. And that's, that's housing for, supportive housing for um, people who are in homeless, homeless situations right now. Um, so if you get a chance, read, read up on it because it's really a nice facility. Eventually they'll have an open house on that as well. There also are two churches in town that are looking at housing. And this has nothing to do with the Housing Authority. This is, this is they're going to work, Habitat with Humanity I think is working with them. Um, so I mean things are moving forward as far as housing goes for low income people in the town. We just need to know more about it than sure. what we do. So I think that all of this would be... And I just want to back up on one thing. On the 12% that the developers need to put, they can also ask for a fee waiver. They yeah. can ask for a, a fee in lieu. So they, if they're not going to provide 12% housing in their development, they have to pay the city uh, money for that. Right. Yeah, Which so goes into the Longmont Housing Authority budget. Goes into the Longmont Housing budget. So they can, if they decide they don't want to do the affordable housing percentage in their in their new development, they can pay a, a fee. The fee goes to Longmont Housing Authority. Yeah. Longmont Housing Authority mm -hmm. is then able goes to Longmont Housing. It does not go to the Housing Authority. Oh, okay. Yeah, it goes to the Longmont Housing. But they're able to use that money in future projects mm -hmm. because they pay to be. Yeah. Okay, so. Do many of them do that? Do you know? The last time that I heard anything about it when they talked to council about it was that the, in the past they were doing a lot of the fee waivers and they were paying rather than putting in the 12%. But it looks like that's starting to turn a little bit now because of course your developer is going to want to make money on it and they're starting to see that they're going to be able to make money on coming up with some 12% affordable housing. So it's starting to turn. A little bit the other way. Now, does the housing authority have anything to do with the tiny homes no. or the veterans? No, that's no. that's yeah. veterans. That's happening. That I think too is doing some of that. BCP, Veterans Community mm -hmm. Project. Yeah. yeah. 
the veterans place right there on 12th and Main. Yeah, that's one of their projects, but also it's Habitat for Humanity is working some of that as well. 12th and Main is BCP. Oh, you mean their office? Yeah, their office. Okay. Yeah. And one of the uh, tiny homes, which isn't involved with BCP, but one of the tiny home projects is at the heart of Walnut Church. They're mm. getting ready to build maybe 10, 11 yeah. with the mm -hmm. tiny homes on their property. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. per se. There's a lot, there's a good amount of building. There's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. And and I think it'd, be nice, to, it'd be nice to hear it. Catch up on the thing. Yeah. I think that's an excellent idea. I'll check right, it out. Do you have another comment? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. No, I just said there's. There's what? Yeah, so one stuff. There. just one last question. You don't have to just, uh, spend a lot of time on. What about religious groups? Are, are they under yes, this? Yes, the churches. Are? There are two churches. Heart of Long Run is one that you said, and then there's the Calvary on 21st and K is now giving some property, and they're going to be building. Is that under the city's umbrella? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All right. And what I found out is that when I originally started this and I asked the city why they didn't have a shelter, they said it was actually better to utilize the church um, programs that go on because they pay so much less as a nonprofit. They pay so much less. They just their whole budget is just so much smaller than if we actually built a and, and manned and managed and, you know, um, put people into positions at a shelter. So apparently churches have an agreement with the city or, you know, not an agreement necessarily, but an association with the city that um, that they can offer things like that at a much lower rate. Okay. All right. I will check it out for you. Okay. And we'll find out. And you can coordinate with Ronnie as far as the, uh, uh, the city office. All right. Oh, uh, what else then? And then they see you get, uh, where am I? Okay, uh, food insecurities. September was under under action month, so a lot of the food support groups we've been talking to were pretty focused on that. Um, it's really, what I'm saying about there's so much going on, we were focusing on food insecurity and the the tap to other organizations that do it, it's pretty incredible. A lot of resources out there, you just gotta start digging around for it. But Longmont does a lot for a lot of different groups. As part of the Hunger Action Month, Kitty Weiser of Meals on Wheels and Kim De Silva from Community Food Share reached out to uh, extend their appreciation for our interest in food and food insecurities and, and asked about what was going on with the original talk about doing a food table here in Manhattan. Um, also got a really nice uh, conversation with uh, Naomi Curlin, who did the presentation here on Longmont Food Rescue, thanking her for the presentation and acknowledging the, group, the work that her group does. She's looking forward to working with Ronnie on the idea of reintroducing the food tables here that we used to have before COVID. And they have a specific program about the food, about the refrigerators. And their whole mandate is to have food accessible 24-7. Having a refrigerator here is outside that mandate because we're not open, we make it available 24-7 if we put it inside. So she's actually gone back to the board. I haven't heard back from them to see if they could do it inside here. If that we basically approval Ronnie and, and the people here, but first she has to get her board approval to allow that to happen. She's trying, she's really impressed She's not been here a long time, but she's impressed by what the senior center offers as far as giving access to seniors as a group. So we'll see. But she's really happy to have made a presentation. Um, I went to one of their community food tables. They do the Collier on a regular basis. It's pretty incredible. Here's Collier Park, nothing going on. All of a sudden, they come up in four or five trucks and cars, set a bunch of tables, and all of a sudden, food starts getting poured on these tables from mm -hmm. Home Foods and farmer's market, and they go from 11 to 12 for this distribution. And there's probably about 100 people with families there getting food. And the deal is you can get you get one bag of groceries per family, but you go through the line as many times as possible. Mm. So you want some, my daughter was and I were there, towards the back of the line, people in the front of the line, big family of people, 
went through once, came behind us, went through twice, as we were even going through a third time, mm -hmm. getting all kinds of you know breads and vegetables and whatever. It's just nice to know because all the food is donated so it doesn't get wasted. Hence the name Food Rescue. And they just are adamant about making food available that would otherwise go to waste. I read a statistic about the millions and millions of pounds in this country that goes to waste, so they're, they're rechanneling that. Mm -hmm. So, really, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Anna and I went to a breakfast this morning. We got invited to the Hour Center to do coffee with a cause. And uh, why don't you just speak for a minute about what happened this morning? Oh, they told us um, there was just a big coffee. We had breakfast, and then there was a meeting, and they went over a lot of what the R Center does, and I'll just read you a few things. Groceries and personal care items, rent and utility assistance, self-sufficiency programs and services, child care, they actually have a school for six months to six years, child care in school readiness programs, parenting classes. Uh, it was mentioned before about housing. R does work with that, but you can't go into R and ask for money. Because if you go in and say, I need this month's rent, they'll say, well, what are you going to do about next month's rent? They want you to be self-sufficient, and that's what they work on. Right now, they are having a fund for, guess what? Transportation. Everybody's <laughs> dilemma. They need another bus to go around to Whole Foods, Safeway, King Supers to get the food. I wonder it's just such a problem. I wonder if they could contact the because they have tons of vehicles over there. And if they would have a vehicle that maybe they could sell them that is still in good condition, but it would be used. I wonder if that would be something. I don't know, I could mention it when I go there again because that's where I volunteer. Yeah. Might be something yeah. to think about. It's yeah. interesting that there's there's food available. They just yeah, can't get it from the food source to the people who need it. Yeah. The other issue is getting people in the community to know what's there. They, they, every group we've talked to says, we we have the resource, the food or whatever, if we can get people here to get it from us. Yeah. And another thing they mentioned is they had they had to stop uh, one of their uh, food uh, dispensaries this one time a week for probably three hours because they can't get the food. So they had to stop that, which people were upset, because I know I was there when it all happened then. But they just couldn't get the food. So it was the transportation again a problem? Yep. It was yeah. the transportation. Yeah. 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 Well, the has the that's food sad. down in down in Brookfield. Yeah. They just can't get it here. Yeah. And oh. volunteer they, volunteers don't seem to be a problem with them. They get fabulous volunteers. It takes 250 volunteers a week to run that place, and they mm -hmm. seem to get them all. It's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. So if you want to donate food, please do. Mm -hmm. The donation door is on the south side of the building. Where Just raise it out. Where is our center? Collier. Collier. 220 Collier. Oh, okay. Some more south. Okay. Yeah. On the southeast corner. South side of the building. It's kind of innocuous. Okay. It is, yeah. It's by George Boyce. Pardon? It's by George Boyce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. George, George, George Boyce. That's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes, it's fascinating. What I'm saying, there's a lot of resource out there, and we don't know about it until we actually start to focus or start yeah. asking questions. Okay. The city's amazing as far as what it makes available to people. It is. Ann and I went down there for a tour. We're talking about first introduced food and security. And while we were there, there was 50, 60, 80 people who went there to have lunch, which they serve five days a week. Excuse me, breakfast five days a week, lunch seven days a week. Wow. Just quietly providing that to seven, a lot of people every, every week, hmm. every day. And they have a chef. So, I mean, it's good food. Yeah, you know, you know, put that in context. The, the, June 24, update to aging well. One of the questions in there talks about the economic contribution of seniors in three categories to um, child care, volunteering, and care of others. 
Longmont in Boulder County, Longmont's the highest contribution economically by seniors, $154 million a year. Wow. In that in donated time. Mm -hmm. It's the highest in the county. Even, Boulder, even the city of Boulder doesn't come here. So 25% below what we do. So this is a really caring community. And the city works the same way. It's a really caring group. So it's fascinating to me. Arlene, still, uh, still working with the uh, community and neighborhood resources. Seems to me that one is budget time. Everybody does their work, but they also spend a lot of time on budgets. Yeah. So they proved it last night, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were they still short? The time well, they can't. They have to. I mean, it. They have they to. short. Yeah, but they did approve it last night. So hey, moving forward. They found that twenty-five million. <laughs> Good for them. Anyway, so working with the community neighborhood resource staff to secure the city of Loma resource maps that show us age, economics, and. Uh, Areas where we can assist seniors. Mm -hmm. That's we talked to them before, and we're still working on that. We've also agreed to give us uh, some of their surveys, so we, we decide to go out to the community groups they talk to. That we we'll use their surveys as a way of talking to, to the community. Last but not least, Christine has offered to review the data we've gathered, so we can make some kind of a cogent presentation to Harold when the time is right about what we want to move forward on. So she's agreed to help. Well, she's not here today. She's agreed to help put that together so we can make a quick, good presentation at an appropriate time. So things are moving. Slow and steady. Mostly slow. Well, that's the way it works. <laughs> uh, is there, is the objective, and maybe I'm oversimplifying here, is the objective basically to have a common food point? Mm -hmm. Like a food, like a food hub, which somebody said a while back. I think it's at this point it's, it's a little bigger than that. Part of the and that's that's the issue for the group has been. We know there's an issue. We know there's a with food insecurity. What are we going to ask the city to do? And we're sort of narrowing it down, narrowing this down to this. Of are there city facilities we can use? Because again, the food's out there. Are there city locations we could use to distribute food to seniors. And that's what maps are gonna help us, where, where could we possibly do this on the city facility nearby, and begin to coordinate, not, that's not our job, it's not what more would do, but to find tie resource together, as I said earlier, there's so much out there, but we, they don't talk to each other, so we can find out where the common thread is, seniors need it, certain areas, how to get food there, what, where to get food from. That's what I think is going to be the program to present to Harold. Not sure how clear that's going to be yet. Yeah, your, your ways. Uh, no, I, I, I understand. That's complicated. I, I, I'm loving the process and the help that I'm getting. Yeah. But again, I thought it was a, this, this kind of issue. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so getting it to a point where we can go to the Herald and the council and ask for something, mm -hmm. that's what's coming, I think, from this map that we're gonna get from the resource people. And I think the maps are gonna be a huge help because they're gonna tell us in mm -hmm. Ward A, here's your concentration of seniors and you know, like that, so you can kind of take a look at it. And then, yeah, I think that that's, well, that yeah. should be helpful for everything anyway. That was Arlene's idea to get the map was great, but let's find the wards, let's find the support of the council. Who's got the seniors and really want to focus on that? Is, is there an office in the city similar to what you're talking about for housing? For mm -hmm. food? Yes. No, that's yeah. what this whole process started around because you asked the four basic needs, foods I was one or two, and at the, in the food, there's food pantries and food support groups that the city talks about, but it didn't appear to be a and the city was addressing. I don't think people think about food as an as an issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think I do. And we have eleven percent of our population is food insecure in Boulder County. Yeah, you know, it's also one of the it's the highest cost of food for a meal is Boulder County, wow. in the country. Wow. So it's an issue. So I think we need some focus on it for seniors specifically. I believe that I paid 50 bucks for breakfast yesterday. Yeah, I know. That's something to be proud of, that we're number one. I'm not sure, yeah. The other issue, too, that, that the impact on the city of food security, when I talked about this, I think it's 
someone who is moderately food insecure, senior is moderately food insecure, presents to someone 14 years older the problems that face that person. So if I'm 65, food insecure, I'm presenting with physical issues of someone who's 15 years older. That's going to impact the city and cost the services. We're having housing issues now. And 29% of our population is has one or more disabilities. That's going to be a hell of an impact mm -hmm. next 20 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. nice to get a hell. And the city has said that. The city said we're going to have the oldest population next 20 years. It's going to grow by enormously. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But what do we do about food? Yeah. So, yeah. When, it, when is this map? Hopefully, going to be computed. Any idea? They have it. They're just trying to get it from them. They they agree to provide it in the budget cycle. They they should have it to us. We're hoping. We're hoping this month. And that will tell us where most of us, where there's a large yes. So it tells us seniors, by so. ward where there are seniors and there where there are seniors who are economically disadvantaged. Yeah, the economic disadvantage is the big one. Well, and they know where there are food deserts, where there are places where people can't get this. Sh they shop at certain places because they can't go to the market. They know where that is. They have a lot of information available. Yeah. But again, like I said earlier, you just got to ask the right person for the right piece of information yeah. that only they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many's good at that? <laughs> yeah, she is. She knocks on the door, they, they open the door. Well, I think we also came to a kind of a stop at the last meeting when Christina told us, wait, you're an advisory board. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, we were, yes. we were, we were, we were, we were going to give food to everybody. Yes. Yeah. It's a shift to focus. That's a yeah. focus, yeah. 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 And, you know, it's not, you, you kind of wonder, well, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, uh, but you just have to rethink it. Uh, at least that's just what I've been doing, is kind of rethink. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you're bringing the issue forward, I think. You know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Bringing the issue forward, because you, exactly. yeah, yep. you know, making the people who are in charge of the city aware of, hey, you know what? Yeah. This population is out there. Yeah. One thing that really bugs me uh, it, it, throughout my whole career, it just it was my pet peeve. These agencies that build little silos and they, they won't talk to each other. They yeah. won't coordinate with each other. And I don't, I don't know why, because yes. they're protective of their territory. And I'm not saying that's the case with these folks. It's just been my experience. That's, that's what's happened. So I would think part of our charge would be to kind of reduce those silos, try to increase cooperation, coordination, that sort of thing. Maybe you'll wind up food czar. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you, I think. I second the motion. <laughs> You get a hat, a special hat with a food zone with a little like, get a sticker on your car. Hat. Get a sticker on your magnet on your car. You're going to hear to know who Carmen Miranda was. That's a good, that's a good sign. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> I hope so. All right, are we going to have a speaker today or not? I, it sounds like no, not at this point. Well, it looks like we're going to have an abbreviated meeting then. Let's move on to uh, anything further on the updates. All right, uh, we'll skip to uh, new business, board vacancies. Ronnie, can you talk about that a bit? Yeah. So I just want to kind of update everybody on this whole process. And I had to refresh myself again. I only have to once a year. <laughs> For, for a short period of time. But we're, we're, what we are looking at on our advisory board is three current vacancies. Um, Dave's term is up at the end of this year. Sheila's vacancy from when she left, and then our Quintana's uh, seat is up at the end of this year as well. Term and so, yes, term limited. <laughs> and so we have uh, three vacancies, and so just this what this process looks like. Right now, anybody could apply to be on our board. That application process is open until October 18th at 5 p.m. So until continue. when? Uh, October 18th. Is, is when it opens? Uh, when it closes. Closes. What is that open right now? It's open, it's now. open now. Yeah, open now until October 18th at 5 p.m. How, how long has that been open? Do you know? Because I talked to somebody that tried to get in there and said it couldn't get in there yet. I was notified the 26th. 26th so, of yeah, the last Thursday. December, huh? Okay. Yeah. And so, and if, if you don't uh, haven't let you get a hold of uh, 
Don to the city? City clerk's office, yep. Reach out to Don Quintana. Right. Um, open until October 18th at 5 p.m. From there, we will be, I will be able to take a look at applicants, uh, how many applicants there are, and set up interviews at that point. The interview process requires two board members, and then myself and I'll work with Christine to identify times. So within the board, I want you all to be able to identify two board members that will be able to participate in the interview process. Uh, from there, I will work with those two board members to schedule based off of our availability, schedule space and time here at the Senior Center for those interviews to take place. From there, the anticipated timeline, once we identify, work with this uh, interview committee to identify what candidates to move forward, um, the anticipated, and I won't know until it closes, but the anticipated timeline for those interviews to be complete. My mental timeline is before Thanksgiving, because from there, we would need, be able to need to report out to the city clerk's office our recommendations. And then they work that into the, um, to the city council agenda uh, for approval in December. The term would then begin Jan uh, January, Let's see what I have. Just January 2025. So January 1. Just three years, right? Yes, three for years. three years. Three. And, and you want to complete uh, those by Thanksgiving, the recommendation or the. Uh, the recommendations to move forward before Thanksgiving. Oh, great. Yeah. So um, I want you all to be able to talk amongst yourselves to identify who those two individuals would be. And that way I know to reach out to when, when it's time for, for that application process closes, and then I can start setting up, um, reach out to those individuals identified on the board, myself and Christina as well, look for dates and times that we're all available, and then uh, look at space, reserving space here at the Senior Center. Dave, you're leaving? So his term is up. His term I have, I have to reapply. But he oh, has to reapply. Re so we have to. Oh. And that's after a year, right? Or is it right away? Or can you reapply right away, or do you yes. have to wait a year? Right. Right. I have to reapply before right. the 18th. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So he does not it, have to it, it was kind of confusing, which it made is. me a little upset, to tell yeah. the truth. But uh, anyway, i got to reapply. You straighten them out. Right. Hmm? You straighten them out, okay? I will. Okay. Okay. But I thought that you had to be off the board for a year completely before you could reapply. Uh, well, he no, has not, not to my knowledge, no. Okay. He no. hasn't been his... Yeah. Term limit yet. Right. Yeah. Right. That's well, after the term it. limit, you can't do anything for a while. Anyway. For a year. Right. A, year. a year. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's, that's the one for a year. Oh, right. he hasn't gotten the term limit yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see. I started with the, I filled the, whose term did I start? I, I, I started filling someone else's unfilled term. Okay. Yeah, so that's the reason for the confusion. I thought last, last January, remember I missed the January meeting? And I, well, I missed the January meeting. I couldn't vote because I had not been appointed by the city council. Mm -hmm. Well, Marshall oh, took care right. of it, and I thought I had been reappointed for three years, but that wasn't the case. Apparently, I was. I right. filled in behind Jeanine. Jeanine, yeah. right, Cameron. So, so that's not what I was told at the time. That's why I kind of got a little upset. So, my understanding is yeah. if. Somebody resigns and somebody steps in, they take over their term, whatever's right. remaining, one year, two years, or a full three. Um, Makes sense. And for, you know, unfortunately, with all that miscommunication, Dave was left off that list. And so, but because of that vacancy, he was able to finish Janine's term, which was a year at that point. So now he, get, he has to reapply again. So, sorry, Dave, um, that they had to jump I in. I well, we do I would the rather micro Here's my experience. I would. We don't. Here's my experience. I, um, I had Phil come to our community meeting at Village on Main, and he spoke for about 15 minutes. He explained it clearly, but the big thing was it hadn't started yet. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be starting like any time now. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to start they in said May. September. They do. So if he comes to what the November meeting, I'm sure the program is going to be launched by then. Yeah. So he'll be able to speak clearly exactly what's going on. Maybe give us an update on how it's going when it first starts off and things like that. And so it's not a long presentation. Probably a half an hour would be great with 
um, answer, you know, question and answers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would think that, in my opinion, I think that VIA and micro transit might be a good combination to do yeah. for our meetings. Yeah, we could move that to November and then we could move mental health to December. That, that's all, it was always kind of arbitrary, you know, so we could have mental health as well as the legislative of, uh, explanation of the process. So we could do that in December, then we can pick up mental health later after the first of the year. How does that well, sound? You still got your legislative updates. That's what I was saying, we could do the legislative. It's, it's, a, it's kind of an orientation to the le legislative process. Mm -hmm. That's what she's going to talk about. She's going to talk about, well, hopefully she's going to talk about what bills are coming well, up. What she, what she suggested is that she would not do specifics because she didn't, wouldn't know what all the specifics are at that point. Then she'd come again in April and give us an update on what happened with those bills. Now, there's no reason we can't ask them about certain bills. You know. It's like an introduction. Yeah, it's kind of like an introduction to the okay. legislative yeah, process. I think that's a good idea because we don't really know how they work. We've been kind of dipping our toe into it without a real explanation of how things work. Yeah, so. we, right, exactly. You know, if we do make a recommendation like we did last year, we want to do it in a timely way and the best way that we can, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. I thought that, I, I, I said, okay, that, that's fine to do it that way. Okay, so can we put mental health till January? Yeah, I think so. So I, I, so I kind of am concerned about putting VIA and microtransit both at the same time because they're kind of, they're competing. I was wondering, I was and just going to ask that really, question. Yeah, I really think, think we need to separate those. Oh. Well, well, okay. I, I, somebody said they complement each other. Well, that's true too. So, yeah, we could do that. Which is more important? Which is more important? Microtransit micro right now, I think, yeah. yeah. We well, need to know what's going on with that. Everybody agree? Yes. Micro transit? Could we do this? Could we do micro transit as soon as we start the meeting at 10 and tell Via that we'd like him to be here for 11? <laughs> what do you think about doing that? Or does that start to get a little messy? Yeah, it gets a little yeah. messy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I have a hard time controlling meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I have a recommendation. Okay. So keep uh, mental health and substance abuse in November and pair that with either VIA or micro tra transit and in December keep legislative updates and then whatever one we did not do, micro transit or VIA uh, schedule one for December. So we're hearing from them back to back months. That sounds okay. like a pretty good idea. Okay. okay. So micro transit. Yes. Be my can we start, can we do VIA first to get micro transit a chance to establish itself and see how it runs? So via right. November and then December will be micro transit. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Do we need a motion? No, I don't think we need a motion. <coughs> okay. Well, that took a little while. <laughs> All right. Anything else on, on that? December will be micro transit. Okay. Let me see. I should write that down or I'll forget. Gilbert, you wrote it down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. And I don't have to remember. Okay. <laughs> Reports. Managers report. Yeah, got some fun information for you. So, uh, general updates. Uh, please ignore the location I put in A. That was an accident. Uh, looking at a couple locations, but happy to announce that we have we are bringing back extended travel in 2025. Uh, we've been working with uh, our, our risk management department in the city to get this up and moving again. So we're we're, we're happy we're getting that going. So in 2025, we're going to be doing a domestic trip. Ignore that location. We're, we're exploring a few locations uh, to get one approved for risk management first. Once I have that, uh, it'll be posted and um, notified in our GO catalog coming out here. Here in, uh, when is our GO catalog coming out? December. Sorry, December. All my dates are getting mixed up. Right? We're just talking about all those months. So um, that's 2025, but then in 2026, we're looking at international and domestic trips as well so we just have so, we have to give ourselves more time for that uh, international travel is that all for bid now so we do have uh, a company we're working with oh you didn't go out to bid we did and we identified the company yeah okay 
So we're, we're excited for this one. Uh, I don't know if you want to say if you don't, that's fine. Do you have any relationship with tribal leaders? We don't. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, excited to get that going. So again, 2025, we'll just focus on domestic. 26 will allow us more time to um, advertise for our international travel as well. Are you looking at more than one trip in 2025, Ronnie? Or? 2025, because of the quick turnaround and advertisement, we're just going to do what we're looking one at as one, one domestic, okay. but then being able to identify and share out multiple domestic and multiple uh, international in 2026. Okay. Very excited. Very excited to have that. I think it's great to come back. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of work to make that happen again. Um, we, we do have a new custodian on our team, Jesus uh, Arias. He'll be joining us officially on on Monday. And so we're excited to have him. Jesus has been helping <coughs> uh, in, in the city of Longmont, helping at different locations, uh, different buildings and departments. And so we have him permanently for us. Fun numbers for you, recreation programs. Just want to share this for you. Um, we were pulling some data for, for our friends and I just want to be able to share it. Uh, here in our advisory board meeting. And so we have right here, it's just showing the attendance for recreation programs. Um, yes, it could be multiple, uh, I'm sorry, it could be the same guest for multiple uh, registrations for different programs. But we did, and I'm gonna look at specifically for winter, spring, and summer for 2023. We served uh, 9,837 uh, uh, visits. We'll say visits, because again, I'm the same guest attend multiple multiple programs so we had 9,837 uh, visits participants right and then in 2024 it was a total of two I'm sorry uh, 10,169 which between the two is an increase of 332 more um, I don't want to say press uh, more more registrations 332 more registrations uh, between 2023 20 for those three uh, seasons and then into 2024. Comparing that with trips, on the other hand, um, we had a total of 2,140, and that's not on this data as well, sorry, I added that in here. Uh, 2,140 participants for trips in 2023 for all four seasons, and in 2024, 2,639. So that's 499 more uh, guests or participants served uh, in 2024 versus 2023. Collectively, those numbers are a total of between our programs and trips, 831 more guests uh, participants were served in 2024. So almost a, a thousand more uh, participants. So again, I just want, I, I like sharing that information. It talks about what we're doing here in our building and at what capacity and how we're busting out the seams and how we need. and it continues that conversation of writing about more space and all that good stuff. I don't think you can answer this, but you don't know how many different individuals have told us. I don't. And so the reason why I can't look at it uh, individual specific is because uh, our registration software. Right. And so our registration software, it's hard to pull unduplicated guests. We try to pull that information and that data and um, our, our software is not, not equipped to do that. We'd have to do a lot of digging and cross-referencing and a lot of time and energy to pull something like that manually versus automatic. Is that a software, is there a fix to that software? We're exploring that because we want to be able to pull those, that specific data, right? And look at unduplicated mm -hmm. versus duplicated. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's, it's one of those things that we have to work with RecTrack, um, again, the software company we, we, we utilize and use to see if that capability, if we can add that in, but we've been toying with it for, for weeks before we were finally told no, our, our software can't do that. So, okay. yes. Can you issue a card to people who want to use a facility here and have them Check that on, you know, on a scanner of some sort just to see how people, you know, what kind of traffic, you know, individual traffic that we're getting. So we've explored different, different um, ways of tracking this information, this data. That's one thing that we, I, I have uh, brought into discussion since I've been here for almost the past two years. 
Um, you know, and what I'm hearing from guests when we're, we are bringing guests into this conversation of how do we, again, we're trying to track that up, like, teaming up with you guests, so what is the one way we can, here's what we're thinking, here's, here's some of the suggestions we have, what works for you, right, what works best for you, and one thing we toyed with was, is very similar to recreation, when you walk in, you scan a card, and are right, able to go into your day programs, um, um, use their facility, right? Having that discussion with guests here of, hey, what if we utilize this system? Uh, a lot of pushback in those spaces because it takes away from the feel that they currently have, and this is the feedback that I've heard, feel that they currently have is being able to walk in, go to Meals and Wheels, um, billiard room. Um, yes, they check in for some of their programs. Like if they uh, are, are doing a fitness program, they have to check in and scan in for that or the drop-in programs where they're going to check in in those classrooms specifically. They like that check-in system versus going in and scanning, a, 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 having a card, a membership, and um, allowing us to, I'm sorry, allowing them to scan in, but then us to be able to collect that kind of information, because that does help us out. And a lot of pushback around that because it creates more of that, what was the word, um, um, like a corporate feel, like if you're going into uh, a lifetime fitness or a um, um, what is a fitness place here in town where you have to have planet, fitness. planet fitness where you have to scan and then they go use the facilities they like they like the the feeling it currently has and so we also restricted or something or it's just the individual feeling it has it's like we have to now check in to feel welcome here versus big brother is watching or something yeah and so there was that that's the information I collected and, and gathered from those conversations as well as um, the, the legwork it would have to okay so say we do move forward to a pass system you know what does that look like for our staff um, and our guests you know if they are coming to check in for a fitness class but now we need them to register for a pass what you know the timeline for that how quick can we collect their information get them a pass and get them to their class um, all of those things uh, and, and so, and so, the conversation kind of died a little bit because because of the feedback I was hearing, really hearing from the guests. Is we don't want that. We want to be able to come in and, and access our amenity. You know, there's things that we do need to consider, right? And the reason why I'm bringing it up is around obvious one for me is, is around safety. Who's in our building? How do we track that? Um, and, well, safety and, and and those data pieces, right? So it does a lot for us, and we do have. We'll call them memberships because that's what they called it, right? A membership to come in to to use utilize the facility. So mm -hmm. um, something that when when I think we're ready to have that conversation with our guests again, and maybe our board uh, friends collectively can be a part of that process as well, is to, um, to 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 be a voice in that discussion and, and loop in our guests as well and staff to kind of say, you know, we are examining collectively as a as a department how to best collect data and I think this this fits into that conversation as well. And would, it, would it help if um, the friends and the board together made a joint recommendation was it in that area? I think being a part of that process and maybe it could be more of a um, you know uh, right now we what I mean by that is that right now we have an opportunity to to um, educate and teach our our guests about the new registration software that we will be using, right? The e lottery system. And so we have classes set up to explain that process, how to register, um, the benefits of it. And maybe if we take an approach collectively with our boards to host those same type of sessions of, of almost, um, 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 the, well, the, host those sessions to explain this is the direction we want to go or data for safety mm -hmm. and almost an informative uh, you know, session. That, that's not unreasonable. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I, yeah. I, think, I think the issue we had too in the 2024, June 2024 update to Aging Well, well the last question they ask is, and they asked this in Boulder, Erie, Lafayette, or Boulder County, how many people have ever used a senior center? 28% of the people answered and said yes, which means 72% of the seniors asked do not use the senior center. Mm -hmm. And we have one of the best records 
The only person better than us is you or Lafayette? No, Louisville. Fifty-nine percent said, you know, we have used it. Mm -hmm. So like, my concern is that we're not reaching out to a broader part of our community because, and that supports getting a larger facility and what have you. But if we get eighty-eight thousand people, it sounds like it's the same three or four thousand people coming through. How do we get out to the rest of our community? You know, from tracking with a membership card like that, let's see yeah, this is exactly. a boost towards being able to do that. Right. And I think one thing that can be explained to members too, I think there's always a pushback, especially with older people. They tend to want to keep things a little private, you know, a little simpler. They don't want this technology stuff. You know, they're not really open to ideas like that. But I think one point that may be able to really make them understand or they would understand would be the fact that we would have numbers to go to the city with. Right. And we would have backup when we ask and we make requests for funding. We would be able to say, this is how many people we exactly. serve right now. We can't do that with a good a number that we are comfortable with or that we think is actually, you know, actually um, portrays how many individuals come through here. So I think if we could do that, and if they understand that's really what we're up, we're looking for. You know, we're not looking to invade anybody's privacy or yeah. anything like that, or it's not gonna be used for, for any kind of invasive, you know, like just a privacy type of thing. It's more that we, if we have data, we have something to go by. Yeah. And we have information that we can say, okay, now we can tell you how many, and with a reasonable amount of, uh, you know, certainty, these are the amount of numbers, or these are the Excellent. amount of individuals who come in. Excellent point. Well, I yeah, like the I, way you think. Yeah. Right. And I, I yeah. just think it's important because I see people talking like that, and I'll say yeah. to them, you, you know, know, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Right. You know, administrators so like Christina, Harold, the city council, they like numbers, yeah, you know, because yeah. they, they don't have this, this personal contact. Yeah. All they got is well, Ronnie on that list. <laughs> yeah. Eric, so, you wanted to say something. I have a question for Ryan. Yes. How are these speakers broken out against have being open in the evenings and open on Saturday morning? And so right then, that I do have that. I was going to provide an update. So right now, we started low programs. Uh, so not programming heavy until we know that the, the word is definitely out there for our guests. So we've, we, we've done a few different programs on Saturdays and, uh, and evenings. A lot of it, it, well, new programs, but a lot of it is an opportunity for those programs during the day that are really successful to have a second opportunity at night just to gain that interest and, and start bringing people in the building. And so right now, again, it's, it's only been this month. It's been, it, it has been slow. It has been slow. Uh, participation has been slow for those evening programs, for the Saturday programs, but I anticipated it being slow, just like anything new, right? Yeah. Just introducing it. Once it catches on, and and this was really only published in this new go, but once people are starting to see that there's more op opportunities available each season um, and, and with different interests, I, I, I do anticipate it. Going we had three surveys that said that they wanted more right. availability. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so, um, you know, and, and again, we are competing with ourselves for space right now, and it gives us an opportunity to provide more options. And once they, again, that, that knowledge is there, we're, we're, we're pulling them in with that interest of, you wanted these additional programs that we couldn't offer because we're fighting for space, now you have those opportunities, and it's just gonna take, take a little bit of time. And not only that, and I think it will probably be slower, it'll, it'll gain traction, but I do anticipate it being slow for at least one year. And we have to go through each season, each cycle, yeah. right, to, to really, everybody to see each season yeah. How we before impact. it starts really right. catching yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also thinking, you know, at first I thought, well, maybe as it gets colder, people will be more apt to come inside instead yeah. of being outside. Mm -hmm. But that may not be the case with seniors. Right. It may be more the case that they don't want to come outside at night mm -hmm. when it's darker and right. it's colder and all that. So we may not really see anything until spring weather when things right. start warming up again uh -huh. and going right back into summer. Exactly. So I think that's why we have to go to full yeah. cycle to really right. evaluate each season yeah. right. and each situation that allows us to assess, okay, well, we notice those colder months are a little bit slower. You know, do we need to just focus more on uh, more programming on the, the spring and summer side 
um, and not, not as much as the, you know, the colder months and adjusting hours if we have to at that point, right? Um, but no, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Oh, great. Yes. I just I just have a couple of questions or yeah. a couple of suggestions. When you decide again to go with this scan situation, mm -hmm. I think safety is critical to bring up to them because we just went through Helene and you've got all those people that they're trying to find. Now we're not gonna have, you know, the water here, probably hopefully, but you know a tornado. But if they get on an airplane, they have to show something to get on the airplane to count that there's somebody there. If they go to the grocery store, they've got, if they want the discounts at the grocery store, they have to right. click something on that. I mean, it's not like they're not used to it, mm -hmm. but I think safety is critical for them to know that, hey, if you're in our building, when a tornado hits, we need to know that. Yeah, and it's an entire discussion because we, you know, if we are, here's what led to that conversation, right? This adjustment we try to make around safety specifically um, was to close off that east store. I didn't right. like that at all. Right. And we we heard it. Uh, we heard it from every outlet, right? Yeah. City, you know, city council. They let me have it on the phone or in person. <laughs> um, and um, you know, any, any opportunity to share that frustration. And again, it was around a hundred percent around safety, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so with that, it's if we're, if we're focusing on safety and shutting off that east door, we have everybody coming in through the front now. Now that's a raise that conversation around the, the passes, the, the uh, member well, membership, the guest passes to scan in and us to be able to monitor and track who's coming in. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of change for everybody at the same time. So we focused on that door specifically. And that's <laughs> that's even focusing on safety, that was our message hundred percent, right? And it did not it was not well received right. um, for our guests. So um, you know, we really have to be intentional with what this looks like. And if we did move towards that guest pass, then we would have to close off that east door again because if everyone's checking in the front, yeah. we don't have anybody in that back door to scan people in or out. Now, Ryan, when, we were, side? when you're using that, I mean, when we requested that, at that point, you didn't have night meetings, meeting class of the center. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have a big concern about that east door being open at night, you is know, I think after down? a certain time, yeah. it is time we should try yeah. looking at just coming in the front door. So we did have it. We that was where we met halfway. Was um, the door closes at, at five o'clock? Right. It is time blocked, okay. and so there's a there's a sign on that door that says the store is only open Monday through Friday, not even on Saturday. Monday through Friday, eight a.m. to five p.m. Right. After that, evenings or Saturday, you have to come in through the front door. Right. Great. Yeah. I understand. I mean, that's, I think anybody would understand. Yeah. Right. And one darkness around the building and people walking in and out, right. I just don't want it. Right. And, you know, we even, and unfortunately, we just see it on the news every day and it can happen anytime. Yeah. And so that was really the focus. You know, we brought in different departments around the city. We brought in PD, risk management, mm -hmm. a lot of discussions, time and energy uh, on that decision. And, um, there was quite a lot of it, it did not. Yeah. It did not. And I was, they made sure I knew that. <laughs> so, so the, other, the other question I had was you've listed your trips, and now that you're t going to Lashley with a lot of them, are the majority of them going out of Lashley? Are you finding that to be um, really useful? It has. And that was, we're talking about pushback, right? There was a lot of frustration mm -hmm. around that decision. Yeah. But when we're looking at, again, our programs during, during the day, we're we're, we're full, you know, our, our parking lots are full. Mm -hmm. We have to look at those other options to provide um, more flexibility for guests who are coming in the building for programs on site. And not only that, those who are who are attending those offsite trips, you know, give them a close, an opportunity to be closer to the building for parking. So that was a great decision there, and mm -hmm. I will stand by that 100%. And now it's finally caught on those benefits. Um, and you know there are some times that we do depart out of here mm -hmm. because recreation or CYF children even family may have an evening program or depending on the time of day may have a program going on at Lashley because remember it's a shared space and so um, you know we do advertise and let it know well in advance that this specific trip will depart from the senior center so that communications there am I seeing benefits as that was a question am I seeing benefits of, of that decision yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay good. And, and, and so and 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think it just took people getting used to it. You know, we old people, we don't take yeah. change very well. Yeah. Yeah. We like everything to be exactly the way that we always had it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's the exact case, and I'm yeah. all for Lashley. I think it yeah. works very well. The convenience yeah. of it is yeah. we just can't dismiss. You know, yeah. it's, it's just so much better to have it there. And it alleviates the space in our parking lot for the right. oh, yeah. programs yeah. on site. Sometimes you gotta tell singers that's the way it's gonna be. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I'm yeah. serious. That's true. And that's where they get it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they look and they'll all right. Yeah, all right. exactly. So I just want to share those numbers with you. Those are fun numbers. Um, and you know, we, we did something we're very innovative in our programs. We did a speed dating um, <laughs> program here. Did you participate? I did not. I did not. <laughs> we had twenty six to it was it was really well attended and received. Uh, 26 total participants and 91 percent had a, at least one match coming out of the event so how many men? Ah, how many men so we can anticipate seven weddings coming in <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's what we said is if Sounds anything like does come up in, we're, we're taking yeah. pictures and that's going to go on our bill catalog Amy right. <laughs> wants to take full that's credit a great about. idea yeah. that's just an interesting that's thing to spark right you know mm -hmm. activity and just fun and that's that our team creating those fun idea. new ideas and then how many people came 26 total I was interested in coming, but I have a lot of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. We'll get you in the next time. time. Yeah. So we are oh, going to be we're going to be looking at doing another one. I believe she said in the spring. I think Is that fun. September? Right? I think it's the spring. Wow. So they're trying to do it here, right? Yeah. And by yeah, we need to work on it more. Good. Yeah. 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 We have too many women. I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we need to get that word out there too. Yeah. Val is starting Spanish cell phone tutoring drop-in pilot program. So kind of something that SETEC does, uh, but geared towards our Spanish speakers to provide that same service, that same tech support. And I mean, this phone, these phones are hard to navigate and provide that, that support so everyone can access and navigate their phone. And I'm almost accidentally calling 911. I want to hit the emergency <laughs> number. <laughs> that would have been bad. Has that started already? So that is is something that we're advertising this go cycle for next, this next great. season. That's great. Our e-lottery info sessions, we were talking about that, about the benefits of the uh, e-lottery system to have guests um, register online or in person. There's that option, but this, this opportunity for our guests to come in and learn more about it. And really, uh, I know I've talked to this board about it. It, it, it. What it really does is creates more flexibility and options for registration, one. But two, uh, allows our trips registration for trips to be more equitable. You know, we got somebody who, when we do our norm, our traditional lottery system, we got that person who gets the number one ticket, right? Gets their number of call first. They get to go in and hit all the big big trips right away. Mm -hmm. And it's with them, and if they decide to bring a guest, that's two people on a 13 passenger van. We had our brands hold only 13 people at a time. That's if it's a one van, right? And if it's two, 36, I'm sorry, uh, 20, 26 total seats, we already have two people taking, you know, um, the two of those seats on, on our major trips. Mm -hmm. So what this okay. does mm -hmm. is if I if I register for, for this example, three different trips, big, we'll say the big trips, right? The, the ones that everybody's circled on their, in their go catalog. Each one of those trips has its own lottery. So instead of me getting my number called first and I'm going on all three trips, each one of those trips has its own lottery. So if I was the very first person to register during, um, as soon as registration opened, or the very last person to register when registration closed, I still have an equal chance, if I'm that last person, mm -hmm. have an equal chance as the first person that registered. Yeah, that's very fair. That's okay. nice, that's right. I like that. And yeah. so, um, you know, a lot of questions individuals have of, well, you know, how, how does the system recognize if I, uh, my, my plus one, basically, and it's, if they have to be registered in, in your household online. So if I plan on taking Bianca, I have to make sure she is registered in my household. And Bianca has to make sure I'm registered in my household, in her household, I'm sorry. So it shows that we are both each other's plus one. So if I say Bianca's my guest and uh, my plus one and Bianca says Chuck is her plus one, then then it will only register one person at a time. So if it was my, my name pulled, 
it'll only register me because Bianca is not saying she's my plus one. I'm saying it's she's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everyone's it, it'll recognize that and it'll still include everybody's plus one but what i like mm -hmm. and what it does is makes it more convenient or i'm sorry more equitable for each person for each individual trip and not only that instead of having to be here from a certain time frame on a specific day yeah. right if I had a doctor's appointment, I had a vacation plan, an emergency happened, I definitely cannot make that one day during that time block. Okay. And so what this does is if those things come about, you can still fill it, you can jump online and register or fill out the physical form like we've done in the past and just turn it into the front, front office, front desk, and we will register them for those, um, uh, put their name on the lottery for those specific trips. So there's multiple options. Uh, to, to, to register and again it makes it more equitable for everybody yes I'm just getting a little technical here but I'm curious say I go in and I register for three trips but I only have a plus one for one of them can I do that yes and my understanding so I is and enter right. separately for each trip right right okay. so you'll be able to identify this one I would want my plus one and this one I'm just registering myself so oh. yeah and so the training sessions? And so the first one is coming up October 30th here in the Senior Center. Are they listed in the GO? It is. Um, and there, and I believe that's toward, is it in the back of the GO? Mm -hmm. Toward the back on the bottom of one of the, the sheets. Okay. So first session is October 30th from 1 to 2 p.m. Yeah, we've got a lot of positive feedback and people, you know, a lot of guests are excited for that. Yes, sir. And you know what? Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm speaking out of turn today. Um, I'm just thinking that this may introduce people to using the system so that if you do go with having scans to come into the building, right. this may be an introduction for them, make them feel a little more comfortable with using things. Right. You know, that they're seeing the advancement of, of technology at the senior center. Mm -hmm. And so when we, you know, when you were to introduce, um, should you do it about using a scan, right. then maybe they'd be more open to it. Right, oh, yeah, you're right. It does support that conversation. Okay. Uh, Ronnie, my question is, uh, you know, I can see these uh, domestic and international trips, uh, you know, being a uh, substantial cost. Uh, are scholarships actually offered for those kind of programs? Not for extended travel. Uh, it's, it's, it's for the, the day programs, uh, day programs, day programs, day trips, and, and fitness. Okay. I guess I'm just looking at, obviously, you know, people of low income would probably not qualify for a lot of these. Right. In, international in, in okay. depending on location and cost, right? It, it, it is not for everyone. It's just, okay. okay. Yeah. And then one more question has nothing to do with that, but what is the wait time at this point? I mean, have we seen a less time waiting for the city resource specialists? Because I know most people are using it yeah. all the time. It, it, we're still in that um, um, four to six, I would say four to six week time frame. Closer, four to six weeks? For, closer to that four week, but we are still able to have built in spaces for emergency appointments. So we do have that built in that if there are emergencies, uh, time sensitive issues or needs, then we are able to still see them sooner rather than later. So, Correct. but uh, looking big picture, right? You know, there's, we've, we've booked that pretty far. So, I'll say comfortably that four to six, but closer to that four, um, if that makes sense. So, we don't see any additional resource specialists coming in real soon then? Mm -hmm. No, I did, um, right, I did put that in my budget request. And, um, those were denied, right? We still have our three needs. One of them is it's always that one's always going to be there. Is the right uh, the rate right, our continue continues to grow, and um, you know we have community members aging into that age five or older uh, demographic. Uh, it's it, it that needs always going to be there. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to continue to keep asking for uh, as a, asking for that. That's always going to be my number one request. 
is 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 staffing for support of services specifically. Did you did you ask for additional staff? I asked for two supportive services um, staff members. But it wasn't forwarded from Harold's office, or it will, it will not be forwarded from Harold? Not at this time. Not this year, I should say. Um, again, again, that's already my number one budget request for uh, 2026. When does that process start? Here soon, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's here in the spring. <laughs> Everything's happening so fast. Yeah, Everything's on those, those cycles. Um, but yeah, that's going to that's gonna happen here very quickly. So. Um, that's that's what I have right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any questions of Ronnie? All right. City Council liaison. Anybody heard about Marsh Martin? Anything? I I'm actually in contact with her. I heard from her the last week, but it wasn't anything about what she's going to do. Oh, okay. So I should. I, I'll try again. Do you know she'll be continuing after the first of the year? You don't know. You don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, area agency on uh, aging. I guess we talked about that. <laughs> Sustainability. There was no. Uh, there was no meeting this last time. Um, this last uh, month, so there's nothing to report. Future agenda items we've talked about. Uh, friends. I want to talk about that just a little bit. Um, You want to talk about the van at all, <clears throat> Ronnie? You want to talk about the van at all? You want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, I asked Ronnie and the staff for statistics on, particularly on the usage of the vans that they have today, the two, and uh, <clears throat> it came to my attention in kind of in a, a roundabout way. Uh, Randy and I had a discussion with a lady who voiced her frustration about being able to get on trips because of not enough seats. So uh, what I've asked the, uh, the uh, finance committee for the friends is to put this on their agenda meeting, which is coming up sometime in the next few weeks. And, uh, I said it's one of those things where there's an urgent need. Um, it's one of those things where you also had to understand how, if the friends buy a van, how does it impact uh, him <coughs> and the city? Well, you just don't hand them a van and say, yippee, it's all over. Yeah. There's a thing of insurance and maintenance and the depreciation of that van over time to allow for its replacement. All of those things have to be calculated into that. So there's gonna be some discussion about where the friends may be able to help with that or how it could be expedited uh, through the city. It's it's a little bit of an involved process that frankly I knew nothing about. <laughs> so it was a bit of a surprise to me as well as others. So, um, we are got, we have that on the discussion for the finance committee to bring back a recommendation to the board. What size yep. van are you looking for? What's your siege? It would be it would be the same as what they have a today 13, because yeah. a thirteen passenger. Uh, does that require a CDL? Yeah, and that's, this, why, that's why we use those ones. If, if this is approved, I should say recommended. What's the total money involved here for a van? Yeah, we uh, kind of did some rough estimate. We did some research, uh, and roughly anywhere between, I think we said, uh, was eighty to one hundred thousand okay. dollars for a new vehicle. All right. I, 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 I looked yeah. online myself, and I thought they were a little higher than that, but then I didn't know exactly what his configuration was for the existing ones. So I might have been looking at the wrong kind of yeah. model. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie made a presentation at the last Friends meeting, and the cost, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the cost of chartering, you know, renting vans, yeah. uh, what was it, the, a small van and a larger van, and versus the cost of purchasing one, mm -hmm. and as I recall, it was much cheaper over time to mm -hmm. just simply buy a van. So. Mm -hmm. My question to the board, since I'm the liaison to the board, do we want to lend our support to the request that Ronnie has 
uh, for a new van. And like he just said, about $100,000. Now, I don't know how much influence we have, but I, you know, I could speak to it at our next meeting and say that the board does support the purchase of a van, you know, for all the reasons that we've been talking about today. And so what's your feeling on that? Should now is the van the only issue or are we going to be looking at an increase of a driver and things like that? That's, I think it really would be kind of a, a package deal as I understand it. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, Christina is looking into with the purchasing people, I suppose, as far as uh, risk, you know, liability, insurance, maintenance, depreciation, like you said, all of those issues. And I imagine they'll fold it into whatever the city policy is on that. And so then Christine will report that back to the friends group and then it'll be part of their decision. But it's a package deal. Okay. So, so what's your feeling? Well, yes, Sam. I have a question. Um, Ronnie and I did a coffee with leadership meeting and Ronnie mentioned at that meeting that the ones, the big ones that you rent have been breaking down. Mm -hmm. So I think that's totally out of the question. I'm, I'm all for the friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Would, would you use it? I mean, I'm sure you oh, would yeah. use it because yeah. you have a waiting list, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, you know, the data that, you know, that, that check was, you know, a request and we were able to put that information in there as well. That, um, you know, here's a, here's a quick snapshot is that, my number, sorry. Get it for you. Uh, quick snapshot. So, example for this year specifically, we had uh, for winter 622 participants enrolled and 182 were left on the wait list. And that's just again, that's for transportation. We, don't, we can't take everybody, right? Uh, spring 540 participated, 42 were left on the wait list. Summer 720. Uh, participated 200 were left on the wait list and this season for fall um, and this is the most participants we've had in the last three years so it's not lack of programs mm -hmm. 757 uh, participants enrolled 757 participants enrolled for trips and as a result 374 were left on the wait list I think you need wow. a Greyhound bus or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there you go. So we stay away from the buses too because it, then we have CDL. to have a CDL, and then mm -hmm. that's harder yeah. to find drivers who can yeah. operate a CDL. Yeah. So we're, we're yeah, looking at one operating of big bus limos that they have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're operating the mini fleet system of the John passengers. Mm -hmm. What's the impact of, if you get the bus on those people that are on the wait list now? What kind of impact would that reduce that number? Yeah. Um, the, and and uh, I, I did have those numbers, and I think that's on my notes at for the board, the friends board packet for that conversation. Um, but let me see, yeah, I, I, I have them written down. Um, but I mean, for each trip specifically, that's an additional 13 people we can take. And I did the math on that one and, uh, for, for the friends board to show that we did have an additional vehicle, with possibly even two vehicles, the impact it can have two versus one versus other. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. So they're going to be ADA accessible because if they are, that takes out seats. Right. That's why we have the, yeah. this, this specific vehicle ADA accessible ability and as well as a wheelchair lift. One, one wheelchair? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things that Brandy brought to my attention is there was four trips that were very popular and even at the end of those four trips there were still 41 people left on the waiting list and one of the things that struck me is here we offer scholarships to people to be able to afford to take these local trips and they could be sitting on the waiting list yeah. and, and that's contradictory in terms of what we're trying to accomplish so, to me, if it was up to me alone, you'd have two buses tomorrow. Almost no, sounds like that. That's but, the way we want to go. Yeah. But um, I'm not. That's too <laughs> I'm not the dictator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I gather you support this. Yes. I do. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'd like a motion uh, that I can take, you know, to the friends group and saying that. Well, however the motion reads, but the, basically we support the, the purchase of a new van. Well, I'll make that motion. 
I'm sorry, did you make a motion? You made a motion? Okay, is there a second to that? Okay, there's a second. Okay, discussion. I just, I just have a question. Would it benefit you to have two vans instead of just one? And would friends be able to afford two vans instead of just one? Because when, when you listed those numbers of how many people were on the waiting list, I'm just, I'm just, it's a question. Yes, is the answer. Um, and, and not to put pressure. Yes, um, the answer is yes. Yes. The answer is yes. So could we say we would like to see them purchase two vans, but one for sure? Yeah. You know, I really, I, I, I really based on the numbers, I yeah, think we need this. two vans. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm just wondering what's politically feasible, you know. Uh, if you think that would... Well, behind the scenes I've been working on it, but I can't tell you whether or not I've won everybody over or not. Mm. Oh, okay. So, well, how about if we just push for as much as we can do? Well, yeah. Two is a definitely... Real. Never ask, it never hurts to ask for two. Sure. Yeah, okay. Exactly. What two vehicles would do is give us five total and allow us to do a large trip, um, multiple large trips, same day. Because again, right now we're competing with ourselves mm -hmm. that we have to off, ske off schedule uh, trips so that we, uh, vehicles can be available. That would allow us to do multiple trips the same day. Um, and for sure, increase our hikes, which is very popular, but right now we only have one bus available for hikes uh, because we have the other two going on trips. So that would allow us to increase we have a wait list for hikes. That would be a very useful, concrete, tangible that would, contribution. That would ensure that those scholarships are being utilized. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, not only that, but Friends has always struggled a little bit with making our mission known, mm -hmm. especially to our donors. Well, if you had one or two new buses, they got a plaque right up front that says Friends of the Ones that donate. Right, yeah. Right. Oh. It gives you that on the side. long term yeah. visibility sure. to the fact that yeah. we're yeah. making a significant contribution. Not yeah, put your, right. Put your picture on the corner. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. the library has their big sale, and you know that the Friends of the Library is going to do this. If you put that out there, you know, like even on the side that says, Friends of the senior center yeah. donate, yeah. yeah, or purchase or what? Yeah, yeah right. I say, I say we go with two. Okay. I think All so right. too. All right. I say we got a motion, right? Right. Who made the motion? Are you made the motion? Mm -hmm. You seconded the motion. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Okay. Do we need to discuss that any further? We support the idea of supporting up to two bands. Right. Or, okay. Right. Which would probably be on the order of a couple hundred From thousand friends. dollars. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah. How does <laughs> it feel? Two hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we went through all that done. One other thing I want to talk about, and that is strategic planning. Uh, again, I'd like the, I guess, the blessing of the board uh, under friends, and that is that there is a that they are talking strategic planning. Chuck and I talked about a little bit about this before the meeting. There's a strategic uh, planning group. I think John's on it, Ruth is on it. Karen Who's, Rooney. Huh? Karen Rooney. Yeah, oh, well, yeah Karen yeah, is, is on it. Okay. And the idea, as I understood it, was to have uh, multiple sources of impact, the board, friends, and the staff, uh, all of participate in this planning process like it was it three years or five years I don't remember offhand I think it was three years three year go of uh, process not process plan and uh, that hasn't uh, really taken off yet and I think uh, part of it is they're just getting used to the idea they're just starting to just starting to talk about it is that fair, you think, John? Yeah Karen I met with, with Ronnie to begin that process mm -hmm. and try and get confirmation of what he feels and the staff feels is necessary to move forward. Mm -hmm. So it, it, has, it has begun. Okay. And I think there'll be more conversations about some things that we can all do together to move that community awareness and the forward. 
Okay, and I guess my question to the board is, do you want me to represent the board as supporting this type of effort? Yeah. A three-year plan, and I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if anybody knows exactly what the goals are at this point, but the idea is to put it in place. We're making a good plan to plan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That is the plan. That is the plan. We're planning the plan. Now, just like you know, my personal planning, I have I have an action plan, a pre-planning, pre-action plan, then a planning stage. So that's kind notes. of where we're at in all of this. We have notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a concept of a plan. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, that's. Is, do I have the support of the group to do that? Yes, yes, yes sure. Group, more than this yes. group can do with the friends to begin to communicate. I guess, the same I guess it was what I'm talking about is up to me to take the initiative to contact the chair or of the friends group or the chair of that committee and say, you know, we'd like to be part of this process. Makes sense. And then I bring that back and forth to this group. All right. Okay. That's good to be. You know, that's, it's just, it's just, it's kind of rough, but that's the idea. Yes, please make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to have David as our representative to the strategic planning committees, um, the strategic planning committee of the friends. I wouldn't actually be part of that committee, but be the liaison or I the liaison, I guess. But, yeah. Okay, there's a second to the motion. Second. Okay, Eric seconds it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right, any uh, any further business? we got three minutes left. Do we, how about the support services you listed on the agenda? I didn't miss it, I just ignored it. No, I meant listed. Listed on the agenda. You mean under Ronnie's report? No, support services is right under the e lottery info sessions. Yeah. It's at the I bottom of the, the agenda. I just left. Uh, Ronnie didn't that's say Ronnie's. anything, so I just left go. That's Ronnie's report. Yeah, that's Ronnie's report. He just report. has some share outs, just friends that would notice. Mm -hmm. So no real knowledge as to why, it's just the trends okay. we noticed. We'll be discussing a lot of that stuff, I think, with the representative from the housing office. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, any, any other business? Okay, two minutes, yes. No, but I was just going to make an agenda. I mean, and make a motion to adjourn. But okay. anybody else wants to, to talk adjourn. first? Okay. Is, is, is there a second to adjourn? Uh, I thought I should comment. This will be the last meeting I can attend. I uh, really commend this group. You uh, really opened my eyes as to how much you're able to accomplish and take to the city council. Uh, I have family and personal health problems to take care of, so I have to withdraw. Mm -hmm. so I really commend you on the work that you've done. Very impressive. So well, we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for all your time and, and effort and all your work. And I have to say, you're the kind of person I like to work with. <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. I, like I said, silos just bug the hell out of me. And you're not a silo person. You're the kind of person that reaches out and tries to make contact and to coordinate and talk to other groups. And I appreciate that. Thank you. As a, a new person on the Friends Board, I've been really impressed by Chuck's ability to navigate a lot of changes that have occurred in the last couple of years. And his leadership and his years of being involved can be missed by the board, Friends Board. Yep. Good work. It, it sends me to me. Yeah. Well, you're welcome to come by and say hi anytime. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. I may take Be careful to stick see out. what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. pop in to yeah. get an update. Be careful to stick you on the board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got a, we got a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Eric seconds it. 
Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.